Now, the first thing that we will discuss is the different kinds of creatures that are found in the book Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by J.K. Rowling. For those of you that are familiar with the Harry Potter universe, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a book within that universe written by the character Newt Scamander, and it details the magic zoology and describing all the different kinds of magical creatures that you would otherwise see in the Harry Potter universe. Uh, this book was actually a standard te textbook at the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and just last year they came out with a movie uh, inspired by the book, which I was very excited about, so I thought that it would be kind of fun to uh, do our own take on the creatures. Now, we're not going to talk about each and every creature within the book, um, but I will pick out some of the more popular ones, as well as uh, some of the ones that you would have actually seen in the live-action movie as well. Now, the first uh, creature that I want to discuss is called the Billywig. And as you can see, this is an insect native to Australia. It moves very fast, about half an inch in length, and is vivid sapphire blue in color. The Billywig also has a long, thin stinger at the bottom of its body, and anyone stung by a billywig will suffer giddiness followed by levitation. Now, the first thing that I want to mention is I don't want to show any of the finished characters from the live action movie because I don't want to kind of tarnish our own imagination and get influenced by their character designs. I want to be able to create something out of my own imagination. Uh, so what I want to do is is kind of take uh, this the description that was in the book and try and do, you know, my own take on it. And this is something that you would always see, you know, if you were to also work in a studio, you would be given a description and your job is to concept out uh, different uh, versions of it, uh, you know, different styles to showcase that character. So what I want to do is, is in the next step is once I show the description of each creature, I want to kind of show you um, how I picked out reference images inspired by this description. This will help me with my uh, sketches later on. Now, as you can see in the images in front of you, I have kind of looked around and found uh, reference images that would help me with my design. So I definitely went ahead and found, you know, certain things like bees, which I think, you know, would be like an insect with a stinger. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Um, and then, of course, I also went ahead and looked up a bumblebee, right? They're a little more bigger and a uh, little, you know, they have a slightly different, more maybe scarier looking touch to them. And here is a beetle with that really nice sapphire blue that was mentioned in the description. So I will be using this as like a reference for my color. And then of course I went ahead and found a stinger as well, just to get an idea of what it looks like. You know, it's just a very sharp, thin like needle. And that is a very big part of what the creature design uh, mentioned. And again, I just took some pictures of wings as well and uh, tried to get that nice iris iridescent color and the, the very fantasy looking wings that I think would work well with the design. Um, when it comes to looking for reference images, you know, really think about um, what would help inspire you. You know, don't try and take, you know, take it too literally, but definitely try and take what you can from all the images. Now, the next character that I want to talk about is one of my favorites. It's the Demi Guys a peaceful herbivorous creature that can make itself invisible and tell the future which makes it very hard to catch. It is found in the Far East, but only wizards and witches trained in their capture can even see them. It resembles an ape with large black eyes and long silky hair. Now, if you've seen the movie Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, if you remember, uh, that particular character, the Demi Guys, was white in color and had this very long, straight, thin white hair f that was very, very flowy. And he had a very kind of sweet, cute look to him as well. Uh, so in the reference images that I picked up, I did look up, you know, Far Eastern um, monkeys and primates and I tried to also find a variety uh, that showed different hair that was long. So now as I zoom in, I looked up images of monkeys that maybe had a little more character to them. I like this, you know, big kind of furry beard on the monkey. Then over here, I like that blue face against his orange fur. I think it made him look quite fantastical and also liked his beady black eyes. 
Uh, even this character I thought had, uh, or this monkey, sorry, I thought had a really cool look to him, made him look kind of, you know, n not like a generic monkey you would normally see with his funny hair. And I love this particular monkey, especially with his beard. I just think it adds that, you know, nice quirky element that would work really well with the character. And then I also picked out this orangutan uh, for the fur. I like that long, thin, flowing fur. And even baboons also have this really cool, flowy kind of uh, fur to them. Uh, I like the way this one looked as well, where it almost looks like uh, this monkey has wings, as well as that little tuft of white hair by its face is also very kind of uh, fantasy-like. Um, and I, what I liked here is I picked out the white fur in the monkey. It also reminds me a bit of the Demikais that is in the movie. I just wanted to keep it there. I might, you know, try a version of it. Maybe, maybe not. Now, the next character or creature that I want to talk about is the Deary Call. This is another one of my favorite characters. The Deary Call is a plump, fluffy, feathered, and flightless bird similar to a dodo. It has the ability to disappear and reappear elsewhere as a means of escaping danger. So right away, as you can tell in the description in the book, it mentions a dodo. So immediately the first reference image that I look up is a dodo. I love saying dodo over and over again, but I think it's a very cute animal actually. Um, for those of you who don't know, it is extinct now and apparently that is because it's not a very intelligent bird and kind of evolved its way into extinction. Now, if you look at the reference images that I have here, you can see that the dodo has kind of a very long beak and a very big, hefty, and yes, just like the description, plump body with these long, kind of heavy looking feet. Uh, and one thing I did notice also is that it's a very boring colored bird, right? It's not very fantasy, it doesn't feel very fantastical. So in my reference images, I also looked up a variety of colors that uh, and styles that really make a bird feel much more exotic uh, and kind of out of this world. So, I, you know, color is a great, great way to really add fantasy and texture and patterns. Like, just look at this bird. It has polka dots, it has stripes, it has orange and green and purple. And uh, yeah, there's just so much different color out there. So what I want to do is when I do create my illustration, I'm going to use a mix of both. I'm going to mix up the shape and style of the dodo and add in some color from my other reference images. Now, the next character is definitely one of my favorites, the Irumpent. This is also uh, one of the favorite names for the creatures. I love how J.K. Rowling can really make words feel so powerful and so magical. Uh, so this is the, uh, the irumpent resembles a rhinoceros with a roundish body. It was a powerful creature which, with a thick hide capable of repelling most curses and charms. A single long horn and a thick tail. They are great, they are treated with great caution and respected by African wizards and witches. Now when I saw, when I saw the description, I almost immediately thought of like a rhino unicorn. And if you've seen the movie, it pretty much is exactly that. It's like a big rhino looking creature with a horn on its head. Um, so what I'm going to do is when it comes to the reference, I'm going to kind of take similar images to that, have that like rhino like shape and face and armor to take inspiration from. Now, when I looked up the rhino images, you know, of course, they're very kind of boring and gray, which is also what they have in the movie. Uh, they did make his horn kind of glow as well. Uh, but I think when I illustrate this, I'm going to give it a much more cooler color, maybe blue and purple. Uh, I might make the horn golden, you know, just really play with it and just go out there and have fun with it. I don't want to uh, restrict myself too much. And again, if you can see the rhino I have here, they have a very high arched back. Uh, you can almost see their rib cages, or is that their armor? And it's very hard and tough looking. Um, so, of course, uh, in my style, and also depending on your style, you want to make sure whatever aesthetic style that your universe that you're creating, um, you know, it doesn't have to be hard and rough as the reference images you see. Um, I really like the softness of this prehistoric rhino, actually. I thought it was much cuter than the current rhino, so I might take more inspiration from that particular reference image. And now that is it for all uh, the list of my favorite creatures from the Fantastic Beasts book by J.K. Rowling. 
Uh, so now what I'm going to do in the next video is we're going to take these creatures, we're going to take their references, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to concept out and take inspiration uh, from the description of the creatures as well as our reference images and try and sketch and illustrate and conceptualize our very own fantastic beast.